this this is a great way to segue into um, me talking about gigantic, gigantic blind spots in media as I was talking to my wonderful wife, Paige, and we were talking about the shit zillion movies that she has seen that likes that I have not seen. And so we watched James and the Giant Peach yesterday. Oh. Which I had never seen nor read the book. So I was not spoiled by the children's book for the movie. Um, I think I saw that. Yeah. I think I watched it on a day where I watched like four different movies in a row. Um, yeah. So like, okay. I don't really have all that much to say. It's a very charming, mm -hmm. like very uh, pointed towards kids movie. It's a, uh, after a Roald Dahl book. Mm -hmm. uh, the plot's not nothing to sneeze at. What is something to sneeze at is the absolute out of fucking control clay animation. Just yeah. the absolute most out of like, we're going to just, clay animate the absolute shit out of this on what looks like on ones mm. instead of on twos it's absurd it's disgusting it's um, it's the the like i'm watching it and i'm like oh man I, I wonder if they're gonna make the 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 fucking grasshopper jump because it's such a pain in the ass to make a clay animated character jump and as they're like doing backflips and jumping around each other and swinging on things like oh my fucking god back when That's, it was oh man back when it was acceptable to just watch these people like kill themselves with precision and you just take the entire movie budget and you just give it to three guys in a room with a light and some and some rope you know to to, to do um if you thought any like that uh uh is one of the 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 def definite heralds uh, of really good um claymation kubo and the two strings have you ever seen that I have not seen the Kubo. That is, it's the it's the best looking uh, claymation thing I think I've seen, and I don't know, like it's also a ridiculous proposition with modern budgets. So I don't know if you're ever gonna fucking see anything come along and go that hard again. But it was made in a time that was past claymation's like feasible Hollywood budget era. And, yeah, way past. That was relatively recent, right? And it was made to prove a point, essentially, about the medium. Um, it's yeah. it's ridiculous if you do ever go see it. It is ridiculously uh, well animated. But yeah, James and the Giant Peach, good movie. Next on the list uh, is Excuse something me, called Stop Hocus Motion. Pocus Not with Claymation. Bette Midler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, horse yeah. lady. Yeah, yeah, right. The, 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 the three lady. witches. The the, the horse lady that has all the sex on the city. Uh, what's her name? I fucking can't remember her name. I, my brain is literally auto-completing it to horsewoman. So I want to say that <laughs> I saw that movie via ignoring it while it played in a substitute teacher's classroom. Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh. Oh, perfect. That's great. Someone brought wheeled in the VHS and pressed play, and we just kind of ignored it while we had a free period. What? Had I... I didn't see Hocus Pocus. I didn't have a childhood. What? What movie? Did, what year did that even come out? Ninety three. Why the fuck would I watch that shit when I was seven? It had Bette Midler in it. Yeah, that. I, I think um for you know, you know the um the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas goth girl. Yeah, I remember her. So, Hocus Pocus for uh, a, a decent amount of of them. They've uh, that's an establishing that's an establishing oh, that's point. Part of, that's part of the pipeline. That, that's part of the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, I see. I see. I should probably watch that, huh? I mean, you don't have to, but you could. You can. But it's like I don't know, man. Like. You can go back and watch that, or you can go watch fucking uh, a Kurosawa movie, or yeah, I could, or the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, you know. But I'm worried. That, I'm worried that the Kingdom Hearts will have spoiled me on the nightmare. <laughs> I, I like. I, I don't know, man. Yeah. Um. I I do appreciate that people are going back to to that now because uh, Red Letter. Did a little like, hey, let's talk about the 
the uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so, like, people are like, oh, yeah, let's go watch it. And I remember I was like, I had a moment back in that era of not watching TV anymore in early college yeah. when I went, fuck it. I'm just going to go rent a, a bunch of stuff from <laughs> Movie Land, which was downtown. And they had, like, yeah. I'm just going to go rent classics and go find out for myself what's the big deal with mm -hmm. Casablanca? What's the big deal yeah. with, uh, uh, you know, uh, Raging Bull? Uh, everything that was a classic that people talked a lot about. And... Yeah, no, like here's here's where I'm at, right? Yeah, I like I I I of all the movies that we've been talking about, I haven't seen any of them. Mm. Any of the ones you just mentioned, mm. haven't. But I can tell you right now that fucking uh, a Maltese, the Maltese Falcon, fucking sucks. I fucking can't stand the Maltese Falcon. I can tell you that a bridge too far is real slow. The bridge on the River Kwai is way better. Dirty Dozen's pretty good. Where Eagles Dare is pretty good, if only because Clint Eastwood being a World War II movie is Let me guess. strange. Is that your dad? Yeah, it's what whatever dad would have on the TV on Sunday. Yeah, it's okay. the movie that I watched. Right. I saw every James Bond movie like four times, and you know what? You would think that would mean that I don't. Rem I would remember what they're like. No, that means I don't remember what they're like at all because every single James Bond movie is the same fucking movie over and over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I didn't have that, so I had to go make my own dad movie playlist. And there's some good shit out there, but you got to find it. Citizen Kane? Yeah, pretty good. Citizen Kane is like really insanely dry, but like even now you can look back on it like, oh, that that shot with the window outside that probably blew people's fucking minds. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, 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 Doctor Strangelove. Like that, that's fucking. That was ridiculous. It was hilarious when I like I remember popping that in. I was like, yeah, that's funny. That I I, I get it. Yeah, absolutely absurd. Uh, uh. uh. But but I don't know how it hold up. But I I remember at the time it was it was just great. Um, you know what's one that you did see that we like what's have talked that? about? Well, Blazing Saddles, right? Yes. So like that was like oh cool okay you caught that one as well. That's just hilarious. That's that that you know there's a, a a bunch of pieces here and there that do overlap. But all this to say that like if you're gonna sit down and pop in something like I mean I guess you can go watch Hocus Pocus or. <laughs> there's some really good shit that you can also catch up on so no here's here's the way that it works uh me and Paige have this thing where i go oh wow i can't believe you haven't seen this movie and she goes i can't believe you haven't seen this movie because guess okay. what there's a lot of movies out there okay and here's the way it works i say a movie that i want to watch and then we watch the movie that she wants to watch and then the next time it comes up i'm like oh what about the one i wanted to watch and then she says I don't want to watch that one. We're going to watch the a movie that I want to watch. And then that continues for about 10 movies. Wait, Nothing. That's right. <laughs> so I'm really excited to watch Hocus Pocus. Okay. There you go. Um, <laughs> now, we can move forward in time and just hit some obvious points, but uh, have you seen Shawshank Redemption? Yes, I have. It's a very good movie. Okay. <laughs> I've seen Shawshank Redemption like a weird amount of times because it would show up on like like Fox Buffalo like uh, sh uh, fucking license free over and over for like three years. I don't know if you remember, but like one day randomly in college, I was just like, you know what? I saw Heat on DVD. <laughs> and I just bought yeah. it because I'm like, I heard about this movie. I heard this is a good one. Well, Al Pacino and 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 <coughs> um and uh and uh uh, uh, uh yeah, uh, fucking what you call it? Uh, the brain, stupid. The other guy, P Pacino and De Niro together, and I'm like, okay, let's see it. And I watched it. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I came so back. And I remember specifically walking back into the club spaces and going, "Have you guys seen Heat? Holy shit! Right. What a good movie!" <laughs> and they're like, "So here's what? Here's, <laughs> this is great. So do you know what my? You know what? You don't want to hear how fucking out of touch I am? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's my personal knowledge of Heat. One." 
I do remember that specific day mm -hmm. coming back in and saying that he is really good. Two, Jeff Gersman and Ryan Davis talking about how that one scene in Heat is weirdly dated because they're sitting at a kitchen table with a tiny television. Yes, yes, yes. And three, it apparently has really good gun audio, which is why they made the Payday games. Ah, uh, okay. That is what I know about Heat. I mean, I've heard about the, the diner scene, you know, for a while. Um, so that was like pre preemptive to it. And then you see it and it's like, oh, that shit's iconic. There's so many moments of just like fucking, you know, uh, 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 TV to go turning the car around all of that such a fucking great you know and then the the of course the classic detective too married to the job to save his own marriage you know right i got four bodies whatever you know waiting on the corner mystery murders sorry if the chicken got dried out <laughs> it's great and i um see, you know favorite thing is is when people do pacino impressions mm -hmm. of things you don't know they just mm -hmm. sound insane yes you just sound like a fucking crazy person well here's the perfect here's the perfect uh, uh next line to that is you hear about all those things and the impressions and so on eventually i go and yeah. i watch scarface and i see what that's about and i go oh shit okay yeah no but I, uh, Scarface was very different, so I did see Scarface way back mm -hmm. for curiosity's sake, and I was like, wow, this is an extremely different movie than what I had been led to believe by pop culture. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of movies where that happens actually, but um, you you get the the high super like current uh, Pacino like parodying himself, and he became a, a person in that movie that is that screaming caricature, but. Uh, yeah. Jay-Z's Black Album drops, the song Allure is on it, in it, Pharrell and him are making reference to Carlito's Way. I'm like, oh, I've heard about Carlito's Way, let's go watch that. That's another old fucking uh, uh, Pacino. And in it, it's like he's young and quiet and has a completely different voice and he's talking like a normal person. He's not screaming at the no, top of his not, lungs. He's not the Pacino monster. At all. He hasn't yet become that. He's not that. the Dunkachino. He's not the Dunkachino because he's still Michael Corleone. You know? And that's the thing is there's, an, and there's a moment where he goes from Michael Corleone into Scarface and then he just locks into Scarface Man. and stays that I'm, way for the rest of time. I'm just, I'm just now personally remembering -ah! like <laughs> the absolute most meteoric nuclear take that I ever go for and I can feel it bubbling up, which is you mentioned The Godfather, which I've never, ever, ever sought out to watch. And then it always, whenever I say that, it always boils down to, but but you saw Goodfellas, right? I'm like, yeah, I watched most of Goodfellas with my dad once, and I was fucking miserable because I hated every single person on the screen. And I was like, why don't you just all fucking shut up and go to hell? Uh, but Casino, though, yeah, no, same fucking thing. God, I can't fucking stand fucking mob movies. They're so annoying. I mean, at this point, The Godfather is just a hate watch so that you can come back and yell about how awful it was, really, because the, it's the, the spite is That's all That's not even in. interesting. That's okay. not even interesting. Okay. Well, they're good pieces of film. Uh, I, they're, they're enjoyable. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I, do, I disagree, and uh, I enjoy them, and I also enjoy The Sopranos. I thought that was, that was pretty fun to watch. So what do you want me to tell you? What's wild is that I'll watch crime fiction about mm -hmm. any other area other than Jersey, New York, or Vegas. But it's like, it's, they're shit people. You're not watching it because you're like, oh man, look at these heroes. They're dirtbag no. pieces of shit. And you're, you're yeah. oogling them in their shit lives. That's the point. <laughs> That's why it's so entertaining. Oh. It's absolute garbage, you know? Hmm. Anyway, um, yeah. Like, The Departed was the crime thing, but it was funny because they were Irish. And then they played the Irish music. And while they were, the huh, Irish they were being Irish and doing crimes. Do, 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 the do, Irish do, do, can do, do, do crimes, do, 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 do. too. <laughs> they dropkick murphy their way through the crime scenes. It was, there you go. Yeah. 
And that was great. But you know what else was great? Infernal Affairs. Yeah. You can just go back and I watch that. I still remember watching one of them. I forget which one it was. And just a guy pulls out a gun and just ices three people for no reason. And you just had a conniption going, that dude's a cop. No. <laughs> Yeah, man, those are those those are fun movies. The movies that Departed was based on, you know. So, um, anyways, it's just it's just whenever you take a moment to decide and go back and and fill in a blank, you know, in in terms of the classics. I tell you what, if you wanna, if somebody difficult. wants to send me a full version of Goodfellas and or The Godfather where every character on screen at all times is just like spinning a pizza some pizza dough above their hand and there's just a really soft like da, 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 in the background like ma- you know what maybe those are good movies maybe but you know maybe but you know like what's it's but what's funny is that in both sopranos and in uh godfather what's awesome about exactly what you're describing is that both of those feature really important moments of the Italian American going back to Italy and just going, I don't know where I am or how any of this works. Yeah, well no, it's a totally different everything. And like being hit with that thing of like, yeah, whatever the fuck you are is some other shit. You're not us. You know? And yeah. that's a really like and it, that's a really like, oh, oh moment for them. You know, that they they actually zoom in on that. So I remember I knew a kid in high school who, of course, was named Big Tony because his brother was a twin and uh, that was Little Johnny, unironically. Hmm. And they took a they took a a family trip to Italy to visit some some like uh, some relatives, and they came back going, "Oh, it's not what I thought it was going to be like. It was really weird. I didn't I didn't like I don't know why they thought they would." fit in speaking no Italian at all mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and being from like fucking Chattagay in Quebec. Um, you know, it's, and, it, and the thing is too, is I suppose it's a bit like music, right? Like, um, think of all the hair metal bands and like, uh, uh, even before that shit, like Woodstock era shit that you were like indoctrinated to and supposed to know via osmosis. But yeah. if you didn't have anyone in your life that was particularly pushing any of that your way, you just had to kind of go seek it out yourself or not care about it. Um, and as someone who just grew up with no one in my life that was really introducing me to any of that uh, that kind of, that music, uh, I'm just like, okay, I've got my my family and my cousins, and that's black music. And then there's gospel coming from church, and then there's my own yeah. interests that are just like seeking out whatever is you know uh, uh, uh like whatever current nerdy shit um yeah but i only really started like hearing and getting exposed to a lot of that stuff with guitar hero one oh absolutely if, if people are actually curious where my i hate music music sucks shit comes from it comes from the fact that there were literally only two bands that ever played in my house at any time throughout my entire life one was the Beatles, and the other was Sarah McLaughlin. You Yikes. could probably guess which parent was attached to which. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Therefore, all, all new music, like, yeah. what pointed my way was either through my older brother, which meant Metallica and only Metallica, mm-hmm. or uh, fucking LimeWire fucking DBZ music videos, which is where I found out about Linkin Park. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it's 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 not, uh, and that's not uncommon. Like there's there's a lot of uh, people in the, again uh, our era that you know okay guitar hero one drops and you you're like holy shit bark at the moon holy shit Black Sabbath holy shit uh, Bang Camaro and um, uh, Wolf Mother and all that shit that was you know like I, oh wow these are good right um, and then uh, the same effect for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games. Yeah, right? no, that's where I heard most of the new bands of my youth for the first time, which was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Absolutely. The genre covering in that from, you know, just from the ska to metal to rap and, and you know, like just all kinds of shit in between. 
uh, was a really big eye opener for a ton of uh, people of that age. So yeah, it, it, it's if you don't have somebody that's gonna just like sit you down and show you the ropes, then then you, that's all you get. You know, uh, I got lucky. I've talked about it before that a friend of mine was like, "Yo, I'm gonna mix you a Rage Against the Machine, Rage Against the Machine mixtape." And you're going to listen to this shit and you're going to be into them. And I'm like, yep, done, sold, got it. And that did the trick. Yeah, okay. You know? Well, anyway, so it's it, it works the same for music. You know, I got to say, regard. I'm gonna, I, I'm actually going to make it fairly serious for a second. Um, apologies, Wooly. Uh, out of all of the jokes that we ever had from the old channel... The Pat had no childhood joke is the one I viciously hate the most and would ask to not be made politely because the answer is, yeah, no, my childhood absolutely sucked ass and was horrible and I missed out on tons of shit and I regret it. So when people go, oh, Pat had no childhood, you didn't hear about this music. Yeah, no, I didn't. It sucks. Well, hopefully. Uh, funny. Hopefully, when exposed to said new music and or th new experiences, it sounds cool to you and you like it. Absolutely. As opposed to just, you know, like, give it a chance to, to work its way in and, uh, and see if it sticks. And I want to say that uh, for me as well, like, Beatles, I had a friend that was really into Beatles that, like, kind of would play it a lot at her place and... I heard about that. Man, it's it's like they have like four hundred songs, and like there's like six that sound any different. I I started I again as someone who didn't hear a lot of Beatles growing up at all. I eventually did start to hear more, and then when again Beatles Rock Band came out, and it's like oh shit, I like these. These are some good tracks. Let me go look back, and I went through the catalog after the fact, and then really warmed up to it. You know, there's always got to be an inception source for that. Um, but I wasn't overexposed to it and burnt out on it by that point. Right. But I mean, if you fucking want to play some Kirk Franklin or the African Christian children's choir, uh, you can bet your ass. I'm fucking dead inside. Exhausted of that are those shit. Good? Are those, are, the, are they good? Uh, <laughs> they're, they were catchy until I fucking, until they deadened a hole inside of me. Um, uh, but I will still I will still uh, stand up for acapella, which is just super. Um, well, you know, like acapella is in like uh, where in the world is Carmen San Diego, like that style shit. They they did there was a whole like Christian group of that, and they have some really nice sounding music that I stand by to this day. But dear God, now, I saw I saw somebody mention something similar about Christmas music. I don't. I can't even hear Christmas music anymore. Mm, mm, like it. Mm. It just. It just auto filters through my mind out into just white noise. I. I literally like the fucking from fucking August thirty first in in the fucking store. Just fucking turn it on and just leave it on until the fucking end of January. It's so. It's it's. It, it's it, it, and it's so unfortunate because it's like think about how Christmas music has been like a cultural thing for most of the century, and caroling was a thing. And to everybody, it elicit it's supposed to elicit these feelings of like oh the season's here. And for a bunch of people, it still does. But for anyone who's ever worked in retail and the modern era of what retail is that didn't exist in any previous generation, that entire genre is annihilated. Annihilated it does, immediately. It, it does. Uh, it does unironically trigger some kind of fight or flight response when I see like Mariah Carey at this point, mm. um, because on every 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 dumbass's fucking uh, playlist for some reason they'd have like thirty different songs, but you need to put the Mariah Carey song in there six times, so that you know mm -hmm. even if it's on shuffle, you're definitely gonna get it. In case someone's running in into the store for a quick pickup, they gotta hear that for sure. I saw I saw a picture of Mariah Carey in a giant ice cube earlier today with the caption she's defrosting. <laughs> uh, I was like, God damn it. I mean she's built a fortune on that fucking like it you know, why wouldn't you just become that person? Oh a hundred percent. Yeah, easy. Uh but yeah, James the Giant Peach is good. Looking okay. forward to fucking uh uh what uh, hocus pocus. 
Sure. If you do get a chance to catch Kubo and the two strings for just if you want to watch some stop motion excellence, that's the final stop on the on the train. I should probably watch Isle of Dogs before that because it has dogs in it. It's really good. Um, I mean, did you like um, uh, uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox? I don't know. Did I? Oh, boy. Okay. Well, that one's good, too. We can do this literally all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you like, Fantastic Mr. Fox is really good, and then after that, go watch Isle of Dogs for a similar vibe. Um, in fact, I would say that Isle of Dogs is, like, built on the vibes of Fantastic Mr. Fox, so I think you should watch that first. Mm -hmm. I think, okay. I th yeah, because I feel like it, if you went backwards, you would probably appreciate it less. So, um, okay. do that.